Hello everyone, um, pleasure to be here. So just to introduce myself, Harry Clark. So I've been an analyst in the EVH industry for about 12 years. Um, and as of the last seven years, very much focused on the data shown from uh, the Avenode Group software products. So what we do really, for those who don't know us, is we connect the broker to the operator and vice versa. We enable uh, brokers to send a request on behalf of their end client for a charter trip. So we're really looking at that charter demand. So that segment that uh, Richard was talking about, we're really focused on the branded charter, the aircraft management. That's kind of the data that we're kind of uh, consuming. When uh, brokers send requests, we obviously know about what kind of uh, destinations they're looking for, what kind of trips they're looking for, what kind of quotes um, are being quoted back by the operator. And we can, of course, aggregate that data, we can anonymize it, and we can start to look for some trends about what that data is showing. Um, so if you kind of look around at all the things we're doing, the, the data that I'm really kind of presenting here is that charter sales kind of um, aircraft sourcing piece. That's the kind of insights. The insights are coming from that, that area of what we do. So let's get into it. Um, what I'm going to really talk about is as I said, the charter industry, and I'm going to look at what's kind of coming mostly for the summer. Uh, you know, late May, we're at a time right where <laughs> demand is building for June, July, August, the key period in Europe. So hopefully I can kind of share some indications of whether it's going to be a good summer or whether it's going to be a bad summer in the charter area. And this, what this chart is showing you is really how early uh, people are sourcing charter in Europe. So you've got two lines here. One of those lines is the percentage of requests that are taking place for more than 30 days before the departure date. So those people who are planning in advance. Um, and then the other line is showing you the percentage of requests which are taking place, I think, within 48 hours. So <laughs> more people are planning further in advance, but you can see how that, that kind of a pattern reverses, really. So this time of year, we're on that downward slope where people are still making their requests for the summer travel period. But then as we get into the summer, things really get a bit more hectic, right? And you get that more last minute demand of people wanting to travel very urgently uh, to wherever they need to be. And it was interesting hearing about the ultra long range segment as well, because that's feedback that we've got anecdotally as well around the ultra long range segment, really uh, kind of some of it's already booked out for the summer. And if you look at this chart again, just for ultra long range, there's an even higher percentage that are being requested a lot further in advance, which is quite interesting. OK, now this one's a bit complicated, but bear with me because I think it's pretty insightful about what it's showing you. So what this is, is this is a chart which is showing you the number of cumulative journeys, so our kind of rough estimate of demands in the Avnode marketplace, the charter, and it's aggregating that by departure month and then showing you how that demand builds across an 180-day period. So each of those solid lines is the amount of demand that we're seeing in the Avnode marketplace for that departure month so far this year. The dotted line is the equivalent amount of demand we saw for that departure month last year. So you can see there when you look at January, February, March, April, it's all kind of followed roughly where it was this time uh, last year, apart from April, which had a quick dip, but I think that's probably Easter movement related. Um, when you look at May and June, May is obviously nearly closed, but it's going to finish above where it was last year for demand that we see in the marketplace. And for June, that's tracking positively as well. July is a little bit behind, but you can see how much of that demand for the summer months comes late in the end. So there's still a, a lot that could change there. And then you can see August kind of just tracking along slowly at the bottom there as well. So there's still much demand to come, but really it's reasonably positive, I think, on the demand space looking through what is being requested through Avenode right now. But it is definitely <laughs> harder to kind of win that trip, obviously, compared to where you were, we were two years ago, 2022, when the amount of charter demands really through the roof. It's a bit different now. It's, it's, a, it's a more competitive landscape. So <laughs> it's harder. You need to be you know, more uh, correctly set up to really take advantage of that demand. And we're seeing, you know, anecdotally, we're seeing more and more operators reach out to us, making sure that they're really optimally set up in the upload marketplace because they really want to make sure that they are getting 
the charter requests and therefore bookings that they should be getting for the trips that they can be really competitive on. So it's really a time to, um, you know, now we're back into this kind of the new normal uh, catchphrase, but now we're back into that new normal is the time to really make sure that uh, optimization is taking place and really making sure to capture the demand that you should be capturing. Okay, I'm gonna get into a bit more of the specifics. It's always fun to see exactly where the demand is coming from um, for the period. So what this is looking at is just for June and July. So they, you know, two core summer months, not August yet, still a little bit far in advance maybe to really pull some insights there. Um, but for June and July, where are some of our core flows of demand compared to where they were last year? So you can see on this uh, table, just you know, Europe to Europe demand across those two months, we're actually seeing is currently 2% ahead of where it was this time last year. The US is flat, US and Canada to US and Canada. And then we can see uh, Europe to transatlantic in that direction, down a little bit, Europe, Africa down a bit, and Europe to Middle East down a bit as well. And that's just for demand for the next two months. The only thing to say, of course, is that's where we are now. We're still in May and a lot can change. You can obviously have <laughs> demand surges can kind of come from anywhere and change what that picture looks like in the next uh, few weeks. When we're looking at this within Europe, here we're looking at demand within Europe by arrival country for all jet aircraft that we have in the Avonade marketplace. Um, and you can see here some of the trends. I mean, there's you know, quite small numbers for most of them. And then a few of these really stick out, right? So you've got Germany, which as of now, for that two month period, we can see is up 43% year over year in terms of demand, which is absolutely huge. And we'll get back into that a little bit more. Um, some of the other areas you can see France up 5%, maybe a little bit of the Olympic effect coming into the end of the, uh, coming into the, end of the uh, period. And then also Austria up 37% year over year, which is a pretty staggering number. And when I look into the detail of that, that all seems to be driven by one event, the Formula One Grand Prix. So for whatever reason, that's really driving demand this year. It was still in the same period last year, but this year it's a lot more popular than it was last year. When we look into that day by day demand, if we dive into that German number, um, what you're looking at here is the position uh, on a daily basis of where we are compared to last year. So your red line is how much total demand was there last year by day. Your green line is how much demand is there so far this year. And then the black line is the how much demand was there last year at the same equivalent time period. So where you see the green line over on top of the black line, that's showing you that there's a lot more demand happening at the same stage of the booking cycle this year compared to last year. Um, and there's a few spikes that really pop out explaining that 43% number. So first of all, they're the German team in the Champions League final, and that always has a massive, massive impact. And we always see, uh, you know, we always see that kind of events, those leisure events very strongly in our data. And then you can see more in kind of the mid June to late June period, just this kind of constant increase compared to this time last year. Um, and that's due to the European Championships of football in Germany this year. So you can really see events kind of helping out um, in terms of charter demands and particularly Germany uh, for this period. I wanted to take a little bit of a look at the Olympics. I mean, it's the first Olympics in Europe in 12 years, which is a very long time. Um, so here we're just looking at the date range from the 20th of July through to mid-August. And this is looking at all demand into Parisian airports. Um, and I think there's a couple of interesting things going on here. So number one, you can see a bit of a spike into the start of the Olympics, you know, around that when it first kicks off. And what is explaining that spike at the moment is really an increase year over year from the USA. So we are seeing a lot of uh, demand from America over to Paris for the Olympics. But I think the other interesting thing about this is I was kind of expecting to see more of a trend here. I was expecting to see a bigger year over year increase for this event. And we're not really seeing that as of yet. Maybe it will come later, but as of today, it looks like the Olympics isn't perhaps going to be as big a driver of demand than say the European Championships is for football in Germany. 
okay, let's change tack a bit. So this is a much longer term view. So here we're looking at pricing trends. So as I said earlier, we're looking at what are those quote prices that we see happening in the marketplace. And then we're taking an average of that to try and get a gauge of, okay, well, where is pricing in the marketplace? Uh, where are charter rates as of today? So what we do is we aggregate them all up and we take the median. And what you can see here is how that median price has changed since 2019. Um, all through the COVID period. And then we have two lines as well. So the red line is where someone's requested a round trip. And then the other color line is where someone's requested a one-way. So you can see that the one-way pricing has always been lower than the round trip pricing. And then also more seasonal as well, more able to potentially capitalize on whatever demand is coming in the summer. Um, the other thing that is going on here is you can see that we have retained that level of pricing increase versus where we were in 2019. So whilst the demand is perhaps heading back to where we were around 2019 within Europe, the pricing is still significantly higher, um, which I guess is perhaps a deterrent for people wanting to use private charter, but perhaps realistic of the cost in, you know, inflation that's happened in that period as well. At the very far right of the chart, what you can see there is just the increase into the next period is actually of what we're seeing for future demand dates right now. And you can see that increase there. That's, you know, people are being able to charge a bit more for the summer in advance of it actually happening as well. Okay, uh, last slide from my side. So here we are looking at a view of the aircraft that are in the Avenue marketplace on the European side. And I wanted to show this because I think it shows an interesting trend around kind of the state of the industry. So what you have along the X axis is the year of make for all the different aircraft that we have in the marketplace in Europe. And then on the Y axis, you have the number of aircraft. And that is as of 2024 in blue. The other color there, the green or red, forgive me, I'm colorblind, so I'm not sure. Um, that one is the number of the net change of the number of aircraft in the marketplace since 2018. So what you can see there is obviously everything since year make 2018, we have added since 2018, because it's impossible the aircraft had been built before then. Um, but you can see that we've continued to add more aircraft to the Avro marketplace. Operators have continued to want to add those aircraft to the marketplace because they still want to generate the charter demand by listing it in our platform. At the same time, you can see that we've, in that six year period, added some more aircraft in the kind of teens period, so 2010s onwards. So continuing to see aircraft added from that age range. But you can see that historically, kind of, you know, the much older aircraft, kind of pre 2000, that red line, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, but it kind of averages out, right? So we're seeing aircraft, the really old ones, they're not really leaving in the same way. They're not retiring. They're not being removed from the platform and made unavailable for charter. So we have new aircraft that want charter availability, and we have the old ones still there in the platform as well. So I think that's an interesting uh, kind of what happens with that point. Obviously, we're now in 2024. Demand is down from where it was in 2022. Um, what's going to happen to those older aircraft? And are they going to continue to see the value in charter at this elevated price point? Or is there actually going to be you know, fewer, uh, less demand kind of compared to that two year high uh, two years ago? And actually, is it going to be worth all those aircraft being available for charter or not? So interesting time as we see new aircraft being added, we still expect them to want to charter but what's going to happen to maybe some of the older aircraft in the long term. Perfect. And that's me. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. And you know, do download the uh, charts as well. Follow that to our page. Thank you.